Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're watching Creed 3. Finally, finally, it came out. I watched it. I had an amazing time watching it. I thought it was a really good movie. Spoilers for Creed 3. I am going to spoil the movie. Um, so just a heads up on that. But this is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. And I thought he did a phenomenal job. I mean, just every piece of it just felt very solid, very, very good. You know, uh, is it like my favorite Rocky movie? No. Is it? Or, or, you know, of the franchise, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I still think that the first Creed movie holds a lot of, I mean, I don't know. For me, I just feel like the first Creed movie, for me at least, is like up there at, at the top still. But I, I got to say, it Creed 3 does uh, an amazing job carrying on the legacy of that creed has created um and i know michael b jordan was talking about how he had a lot of anime influence in this movie and you can tell from the beginning that with the naruto poster in the background which was really which was a really sweet um like nod to those to, to his influences and you could definitely tell from the action sequences from the fight scenes that he has you can see him analyzing his opponent i like that they brought back uh the guy from the first movie that he fought and that was going to be his last fight to kind of end it all you know until eventually he has to fight uh I'm trying to remember his name in the movie dame dame anderson diamond dame anderson and we'll get to that in a minute but overall, I felt that the film, I mean, it definitely had so much going for it and also going against it. It feels like every single time I see Creed, it's always about the past. How can you run away? You know, it's it's pretty difficult to be like, he's building his own legacy and I never get to see it, sort of, right? But I understand it. I understand. Because in the first one, it was him accepting him, him, himself and his name. But it was also about, like, the past uh, It was like the past kind of dealing with his father dying. You know, it was, it was a lot of nostalgia, right? Coming back and, and being in that place, trying to get away from somebody who he never grew up knowing and he doesn't really know. And the past, like, living through him... In a way, you know, he he is the his legacy, sort of. Uh, Adonis is Apollo's legacy. It's his, it's his son. But we never get to see him deal with it, and that's kind of the past I'm talking about. And then the second one, it's obviously Drago and his son fighting Creed again. You know, it's all history repeating itself. And and this one, it deals with the past again, but. It's actually Adonis' past, his real past. It has nothing to do with his father. It has nothing to do with Rocky. It has nothing to do with that. It's just him and him alone. And I felt overall this is the most connected or like soul, soul connection I had to, to Adonis Creed as a character. Him running, still trying to run away from pain, from, from abuse, from him running away from who he used to be or was during a time when uh, it didn't feel like anybody really was there for him. And now we kind of get a little unveiling of more of his past, more of like what his life was before he got found by um, Apollo's wife. I, I forget her name, but... It's his mom. So just to shortly speak, even though it's not really his mom, his real mom, I don't know what happened to her, but his real mom is still out there. And maybe she'll come up again. I don't know. But she's off out there. And then she took him in and raised him because she loved Apollo and 
through raising him, she kind of forgave Apollo. But, you know, looking at his life before that with his friend uh, Dame, Damien uh, Anderson, who was also a bo boxer, they grew up together fighting. That's how they really bonded and connected. And I felt like the opening sequence of seeing them both together, like just kind of that, uh, that starting point was really I mean obviously it, it establishes a connection between the two through a past a flashback so to speak if you will and it shows that they were really close to each other they were like brothers as he says in the movie and we see a completely different sort of transition when they get to adulthood and they become older people and I have to say Jonathan Majors he really sells this movie he does such a good job as Damien I mean he shows a, a high le a, like a grittiness to him he shows a, a pain and tortured person but through his facial expressions and his emotions it seems like he's just really been battered by living in prison and what his mental state is going through. He wants everything quick because so much is so much time has gone by, you know? It's a it's a real shame what happened to him. But what I'm trying to get at here is that looking at who he was in the beginning of the movie, he was somebody who had so much going for him. And then obviously as time has gone on, he's not as patient anymore. He's not as his, his dreams are all gone. Everything that he planned ahead for or that he kind of wanted for himself is back then. You know, it it's the time has already passed him by. So now he's somebody completely new, somebody completely different. And I, I, uh, I'll say it, it bugged me a little bit when he was fighting dirty, but maybe that's how he had to be. I would really like to see more of like a, like prison fighting. Maybe that's something he could have done. Or, you know what I mean? Like, he's in the prison. He's going to work in the prison. But the inmates have to be, let's say, entertained somehow. So he puts the gloves on and he does like prison fights. You know? Like, that's that's something they could go with, I guess. You know? I don't know. But I also felt like Every interaction between uh, Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan had such a... There was so much unsaid. There was so much that they should have... Uh, so much dialogue that the two of them could have if they were open and honest and vulnerable with each other. But because so much time has passed on and because, you know, the their men... In, in a, in a, so to speak is that they don't want to talk about those things they don't want to talk about the past hurt you know I'm like just get straight to the point you know I'm watching the movie I'm like just get straight to the point you know say say you're sorry and that you wish you would have helped out and reached out more what was prison life like you know tell them tell them uh, all of the all of that stuff but he doesn't you know they don't they they keep it bottled inside until, you know, obviously it explodes out and it becomes very public to the people. And I also thought, because they're both in such different places and different points in their lives, that maybe... Um, maybe like a, a little restraint would come from uh, from Creed. It felt like, you know, he wouldn't necessarily always... I mean, let's be clear. It was always going to end in a fight with these two, right? Because there was so much building between them. And I feel like one of the main moments of the movie that sold... There's one shot in the whole movie that represents so much and that was like a, a perfect shot perfect frame of what this 
of what these two characters mean to each other or like what they were going through in that moment or what this this movie was kind of like foreshadowing or building up to. And I think if you've watched the movie, you know the shot I'm talking about, but spoiler alert, you know, there's a shot where Michael B. Jordan is leaving uh, Jonathan Majors' uh, locker room before Jonathan Majors gets a shot at the heavyweight belt to be world champion or whatever, right? And so Michael B. Jordan is walking out and Jonathan Majors is still in the locker room. And there's a point where Michael B. Jordan, and there's a wall between the two of them, right? So they don't necessarily see each other anymore. Michael B. Jordan looks to his right, Jonathan Majors looks to his left, and they're just both looking at each other, but there's a wall between them. You can't, they don't actually see each other, but they, they're looking at each other. And that's the most perfect shot of the whole movie that I can uh, tell you from watching the movie in that represents what the movie's trying to tell you is that these two characters are connected to each other, but there's a wall to e between each other. And it's until that wall gets taken down and it's just the two of them in a room, they're going to fight it out. They're going to, they're going to push each other. They're going to, there's nothing more to say. It's only, it's only contact that matters. And we see, and we see, um, kind of why Creed wins in the end, you know, another spoiler. I already said spoiler, but in the, in the end, Creed fights, uh, Damien and he wins, you know, he wins back the heavyweight championship title, the belt. And we kind of see. We kind of see why Creed wins while he's training. Because he trains with Drago. That was that was a crazy move. He was training with Drago. I never thought we'd see him again. I thought he was kind of done for, but obviously he still has talent and obviously he, he still deserves to keep on uh boxing. You know, he gotta make a living somehow, right? So Drago comes back and he trains with uh Creed, but we see that Creed isn't really doing so well right off at the beginning, and that's because he's holding on to a lot of the pain or the guilt or the feelings buried deep inside of him, and it's until he rises above it or learns to stand up and face it and to, to deal with it on his own that he's able to really physically triumph, you know, over Drago and over... Uh, Damien over Jonathan Majors' character. And that's and that's what the training uh, experience was about. They do it really quick, you know, but obviously it's a lot more of mental work. You have to be okay in your mind if you're going to physically compete, if you're really going to be strong about it, which is something that I don't think Damien's character can say. Because he hasn't let go of a lot of the pain. He hasn't let go of a lot of feelings that he's going through. You know, he's just rough and fighting ev with every with every piece of strength that he has. He's just fighting and fighting and fighting. Whereas Creed, after losing his mother and gaining her forgiveness and learning about how she feels about Apollo and what... It really all meant for her raising him and being with him. What 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 did all of that mean? And it was about her forgiving him. And it was about her letting go of any... You know, she let go of a lot of pain. And that meant a lot to, to Creed. And it's why moving forward... And because of looking at so much of what he's built with Bianca and his daughter that he's able to to find the time to become at peace with with the emotions that he's carrying and the feeling of not not being good enough. But and it really felt for me that Creed became 
so much more whole in this movie, which is sad because his mom dies, right? But he gains a level of peace and emotional stability when he's no longer holding on to his dad or his mom or Damien or Rock, you know, he or Rocky, you know. He he just lets it all go. And speaking of Rocky, he's not in this movie. Uh but Sylvester Stallone did produce it. He was a part of the film in a in a manner of speaking. Which the the only scene that I feel like Rocky could have been in and should have been in was when the mom died. You know, if he was going to be in the movie at all which he didn't have to be. I thought I didn't really miss him all too much. But when the mom died, I thought it would have been like, a, you know, a little bit of a cherry on top or, you know, icing on the cake, I feel. Just a, a little sweet moment that Rocky could have could have had with uh, Adonis. Especially because he was there for Apollo's funeral, but then he, he nev- obviously never spoke to her again. And I, I just felt like him going to another funeral would kind of, you know, paying his respects would be, would be really good. But and then then that's the only scene I feel, that would be the only moment, um, that he would need to like pop his head in. Other than that, I feel like. Uh, Michael B. Jordan held it all on his own, and I don't need. Sylvester Stallone to be in the movie to like support Creed or to watch Creed anymore. I feel like he's kind of made it on his own by now and he's capable of of leading it all by himself. You know what I mean? But it's always nice to see Rocky and obviously he has his issues with uh with the studio with the the producer, the people behind the scenes, he has the problem with. And it's always frustrating and upsetting when stuff like that happens because it's really a, a a big punch in the gut to people who actually are, you know, the creatives and the people who put in the the work to become who they are, but it doesn't end up working out in the end. And it still continues to to get pushed against. But... Like I was saying, uh, I feel like what he's done with Rocky is already so beautiful. And it's just like the way that they ended it on Creed 2 just felt right, you know? If that is the way that they're going to end it, which maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But we'll see moving forward. And that's an, and that's another thing. They, they're they thinking of more spinoffs and, and uh, you know, series and uh uh, shows and stuff built in other movies built around Creed and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like a, a Jonathan Major spinoff movie they might do with his uh, character Damien or a spinoff movie with Drago they might do. You know what I mean? It's like, whoa, that's that's crazy. But I don't know. It's It seems like it could work. It seems like it might be the way to do it. I have no idea. All that I'm uh, I'm trying to say is that like the way this movie ended felt kind of final, but at the same time, there's so much more because it felt. When I say final, I mean it just felt like uh, a clean ending. There's no. There's no loose ends per se, right? In the last movie, it was kind of like. They beat Drago, but now he still has to be the the champion, you know. In this movie, he's already the champion. He already was at at the top. He already has a family. He already has a uh, endorsements and he has his own gym and he's, you know, promoting fighters and he's being like this big uh he's this big deal in boxing that he doesn't even need to be in the ring anymore. You know, he doesn't have to fight anymore. And so when he wins the uh, the belt back, it's like, well, that's it. You know, I feel like it's it's kind of done now. You know, he can just give the belt back to somebody else or do whatever, and then that's it. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this 
this play is moving forward. If there is even is a forward, right? If there is a another step, but they're they're excited about the future. They want to do more Creed movies. They want to do more, uh, more build up in this franchise that has uh, lasted for so long, like fifty something years. It's just it's incredible to see how a, a single character a single movie has created so much and i i look forward to seeing what comes next you know i'm i'm really excited so thank you guys so much for listening i hope you guys watch creed 3 i hope you guys liked it i know i definitely enjoyed it a lot and yeah i think it's it it was the biggest uh, sports highest grossing sports movie ever released so people like it I like it and I'm excited to see what they do next or what comes next after this so anyways thank you guys so much for listening I'll see you guys all next time thank you